Now we recall from preceding class that uh, the solution to mx double prime equals negative kx, which of course represents net force equal to negative kx, a linear restoring force. Our solution can be expressed as uh, x of t equals a cosine of omega t plus theta naught, or as a cosine of omega t plus b sine of omega t. And the a that you get here is not the same as the a that you get here. The solution is independent of this one. Uh, if you combine the a and the b here, you'll get the values of a and the value of theta naught here. And vice versa, if you combine the a and the theta naught here, you can figure out what a and b are here. And in this case, omega is the square root of k over m. And it's fairly easy to understand how those solutions come about. <coughs> we haven't proven that this is the only, the, the, that the only possible solutions can be expressed either this way or this way. And of course, there are other ways to express them. But uh, uh, this is one way to express the only possible general solution to the equation. This is another way. Again, that proofing, proving that that's the case is a, um, a task for differential equations course. So we're not going to talk too much about it here. Um, now, we have a situation where we want to release the pendulum at a position three centimeters from equilibrium and let it oscillate back and forth. Now, we could three centimeters from equilibrium could either be at plus three centimeters or at minus three centimeters. We're going to choose the plus in this case. The other thing we know about these solutions is that, um, especially this solution, this solution is modeled by motion around a reference circle of radius A with the t equals zero position on the reference circle being theta naught. And x is simply the projection of the point on the reference circle onto the x-axis. Now we'll see how that works out uh, in a, a number of examples uh, on this particular worksheet. So again, we're releasing three centimeters from equilibrium. We're going to say we're releasing at x equals plus three centimeters. And if we release at x equals plus three centimeters, it's going to turn out that theta naught has to equal zero. Now we could figure that out analytically. But in this case, uh, in, in the subsequent cases, we're going to be more analytical. Uh, here, we're just going to say, uh, we know that theta naught has to be zero. Why? If we release a pendulum from rest three centimeters from equilibrium, then it's never going to swing. By conservation of energy, it's never going to be able to swing more than three centimeters from equilibrium. So three centimeters is going to be your maximum distance from equilibrium through the whole cycle. And of course, you will achieve three centimeters. On an ideal pendulum where you don't lose energy, you keep coming back to that three centimeter position and moving over to the negative three centimeter position, back and forth, back and forth, forever <coughs> in the ideal case. Now, if you look at x of t equals a cosine quantity omega t plus theta naught, you know that a has to be three centimeters because again, the maximum value of x of t is going to be three centimeters. The maximum value of a cosine function is one. If the a is not three centimeters, if a is less than three centimeters, then the maximum you can get here is going to be less than three centimeters times one. So it's never going to get to the three centimeter position. If a is more than three centimeters, then when the cosine of omega t plus theta naught is one, x of t is going to have to be more than three centimeters, but we've just seen that it can't be more than three centimeters. Three centimeters is the maximum value. It's never exceeded, but it is achieved. And from that, we deduce that a has to be three centimeters, which means in terms of the circular model that we have a circle of radius three centimeters. So we can say, OK, with confidence, this has got to be three centimeters because our maximum value of x has to be three centimeters. And maximum value of x is going to occur at this point on the circle. 
from this we can see that our r of zero vector is three centimeters times i. If we choose x of zero equal to plus three centimeters, then r of zero has to be three centimeters times i. From that, we conclude, again, and, and this is a little more formal, that a has to be three centimeters, so that our r of t function is three centimeters times the cosine of omega t times i plus the sine of omega t times j, omega t being the angle of our r vector at time t. And of course, omega t um, represents that angle. When t equals zero, the angle is zero, so that when we have clock time t, the angle has to be omega t, omega t being the change in the angle. We start at angle zero, change by omega t, we end up at omega t, and we've seen this previously. This implies that our r of t vector, which is on the circle, projects to the x-axis. Where? Well, the projection is going to be 3 centimeters times the cosine of omega t i. In other words, 3 centimeters cosine of omega t i is the x component of the r vector. So x of t has to be 3 centimeters times the cosine of omega t. <coughs> so we can say that well, x of t is a cosine of omega t plus theta naught has to equal 3 centimeters times the cosine of omega t. We conclude that theta naught equals 0. a equals 3 centimeters in this model. And omega, as we have seen previously, is the square root of g over l, 2.5 radians per second. Remember, we derived this by looking at the free body diagram for the pendulum and a similar triangle with the actual configuration of the pendulum in space. And I'm not going to go through that again, but we did that rather thoroughly, I think, in the preceding class. Now, I haven't actually written it out, but our equation of motion is then x of t equals a, which is 3 centimeters, times the cosine of just omega t since theta naught is zero and omega is 2.5 radians per second. So it's going to be three centimeters times the cosine of 2.5 radians per second multiplied by t.